it's a bit of a nonsense the race they did a couple of inspections that morning they passed it um, and you, your question what the form is worth but the winner Willie Whipper in the left has come out and since Frank that form winning a, a listed race at um, Pontefract so the, the form looks okay but I say it was on heavy ground he's going to be beat eight, eight lengths but you'll see once beaten he, he's eased down inside I think this is a major danger to the favourite because I think it is good form that I interviewed uh, George Duffield after that Willie the Whipper won that listed silver tankard at Ponty next time and he said they were fancying the Baron horse that day uh, but he pulled well clear but like you say they did ease up on the uh, on the second that day yeah well so. what I will say is that that day he, he looked like going to the start and, and early in the race that he knew his job so he mightn't improve that much yeah. that said he mightn't need to improve that much to, to, it's a fairly thin race you know, the first three in the bet and it's 10 to 1 bar yeah, there's an on-runner here, Rangoon, but that one's form hadn't been much anyway. That was behind Twilight Pearl last time out. It was a long-standing maiden, but that's now an absentee. But a similar profile is Brooks Bounty, who was behind Red Cobra last time. Red Cobra, although rated 70, has had eight time, uh, attempts to lose the maiden tag prior to that. Yeah, but what Red Cobra had at air that day was experience, because yeah. that was very similar to Hamilton, i.e. it was the ground was absolutely bottomless. Um, he's from the family of Winker Watson. Um, it was a good starting point, and in truth, as the betting would suggest, there's very little between um, this one and, and the Baron horse. Yeah, and uh, we've mentioned Brooks Bounty. Then you're getting towards the outsiders already because there's an absentee. What about Fafa? Um, yeah, two starts, um, and it's ran OK. It looked more of a, a three-year-old handicapper to me uh, in the paddock and in form as well. Um, nine to one, it was nibbled at a little bit this morning, but I didn't think his form was anywhere near as strong as, as the likes. You can see him walking around. He's got a bit more about him, actually. I did The, the favourite in the paddock, he, he was very small, but he's, he has got the form in the book. Mm. I was there that day at Ponty when Yorkshireman won that race in which Faffer was beating 11 lengths. Again, it was by Pontefract standards. It was very testing ground in indeed, uh, but it wasn't that strong the form, I know they think a bit of the winner and The second came out and won a, a, a nonsense of a maiden yesterday, yeah. tw- 12 to 1 on but in fairness to Medici Dancer, the stable companion of this um, had, had form in the book at, at Newcastle the time before as well and we mentioned Super U, Mark Johnson's horse had a couple of spins on the yeah. all-weather so far. Yeah, nice, uh, interesting pedigree, two starts in the all-weather, shown very little, big step up. Mark Johnson took this race 12 months ago, but what he's shown uh, thus far in the all-weather, he can only be watched. Mm. Yeah, going back to general direction, though, uh, that run last time out at uh, Nace does look solid. It was a racing pulse rating of 73, which would give him a real strong chance here, and Paul Mulrennan just the icing on the cake there. Yeah, I say they, they went from first time out, um, small Yard and Kildare and the Curra um, that knew the time of day and it, it, Down Royal it looked like the, the money was well and truly lost well it was that day but he obviously took a, a step forward at Nace and very testing ground mm. so we, we know he, he handles ground you'd respect him coming over here you can see there the shot he, he isn't the, he isn't the biggest but this place should suit him the, the bend comes up fairly quick he's had them two runs they'll hold him in good stead and I think Paul from stall five will be will always have him handy mm, yeah Tony Hamilton's out wide in stall nine the draw in maidens not as significant as in handicaps when they can have a ragged start in a race like this yeah and also you've got what four down runners now, so there's only eight runners, mm. so it's it's not as bad as first thought when uh, books bounty and also more importantly the Baron horse. Mm. If you're thinking this morning, uh, I'm out installed 12 with 12 runners, you're not now, you're out installed eight. Look at Marcus Caesar, 11 to 4 now from 100 to 30. Like I say, they thought an awful lot of it when they sent it up to Hamilton, but ran into that Willie the Whipper on horrible ground, it has to be said. So the form is uh, questionable in as much as the defeat is excusable. Shortened again, 5 to 2, but highly regarded. That's in from 100 to 30. Marcus Caesar and 100 to 30. Brooks Bounty, who did give the winner £4 uh, last time out. Brooks Bounty, 13 to 8, though, the price of general direction. I think the betting's about right now, 13 to 8. I wouldn't want to be laying the favourite any. any um, no longer this year. I think I think he deserves to be 13 to eight. The, the David Baron horse, I think um, his form is, is fine with Willie w- the Whipper coming out and doing what he did. But you just question 61 days. Where where's he been um, since then? Obviously this time of year that you have plenty of opportunities to get them out. So, um, but he looked fine in the paddock and. Um, David Byrne, obviously, man, uh, he had a winner yesterday, Dory K at Redcar. Yeah, and when they back him, it's interesting. They back one of theirs called La Silf at a big price here earlier in the season, and that ran with credit and has gone on to win when it switched back to the old weather since. So they know when they've got something on their hands capable of winning, but trying to collaborate English and Irish form here at the head of the market, a difficult thing to do. Let's head up to the commentary box. It's Catherick, so it must be Martin Harris. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Pete. Niall, everyone at home. Last three about to go in en masse 
That's it, they're all in for the opener. And they're off. They jump away over six furlongs for the CatriBridge.co.uk Median Auction Maiden and its general direction in the Royal Blue and Yellow, who's quickest into his stride with Superu for company on the inside. Brooks Bounty in the yellow sleeve jacket is racing just off the front pair in company, the white-faced Faffa. At the other end of the field, Don't Tell looks rather lit up and he's pulling hard, moving up on the inside. Uh, Heights Ridge is labouring badly some way behind the others as they begin the descent towards the halfway stage. Superu up the inside in dark blue and orange with general direction. Brooks Bounty, the improving don't tell either side of Faffa. Marcus Caesar's last of the leading group of half dozen and they've dropped the uh, last pair. Diddy Eric is seven lengths behind and a further three back is Heights Ridge. Off the turn, general direction from Subaru who's more animated on the inside. Brooks Bounty is close enough if good enough down the outside. Marcus Caesar staying on into fourth as Faffa weakens. They're approaching the final furlong in general direction and Paul Mulrennan have got a two length break over Brooks Brooks Bounty, Marcus Caesar staying on nicely into third as Superu fades, but General Direction is holding Brooks Bounty inside the final furlong, and under hands and heels, General Direction will pretty much make all to win the first convincingly. Second place went to Brooks Bounty, well clear of Marcus Caesar, and then Diddy Eric, who is staying on best of the rest of the finish. Irish Raider wins it, number four, general direction, and it was almost really hands and heels by Paul Mulrennan, just holding his mount together in this tested ground, and was always really holding Brooks Bounty, who's uh, run up to form, having a clock to time or a, a rating of around the 70s last time out, giving four pounds to the winner. Marcus Caesar finishes third. He might build on this slightly, but uh, Diddy Eric, a bit of an eye catcher, but let's not get carried away back in fourth. It was a weak race, and well done the Irish for coming over and finding the opening. Yeah, exactly. Lost the middle target the third time of asking, and uh, it was fairly plain, plain uh, sailing for him, wasn't it? He was out from stall five, always in front. The second horse, Brooks Bounty, sort of half bit lost coming around the, the home bend. When take a look back at it, um, he was under pressure a long way out. He comes from the runner, comes from stall nine, the winner comes from stall five. Um, off the rest, Tim's East of East newcomer Heights Ridge was the only one who missed a kick and was badly outpaced after a furlong, but he's in front here after a furlong. and um, always looking happy. Mm. And on the outside, you can see Brooks Bounty. You wouldn't necessarily say he's built on that performance last time out, has he? You wouldn't say he's going forward. No, but there was a straight six furlongs there. Catrick, the bend comes up quite quickly. You'll see him here. He travels okay, but he does. Still, once they're turning back in towards home, he's, he's got a bit lost, which they can do at Catrick. It is, it is quite a sharp bend. Um, you see Tony's just niggling to keep and further back. The, the Baron horse is, is off it as well, but he's plenty natural too, this horse. Um, he just he looks like even if they went back to five, it wouldn't inconvenience him that much. Yeah. Um, Mark Johnson's horse, uh, Super Rude, down towards the inside, making this turf debut. He's showing up better today for for a long way. Um, 